Hey guys, Rev here. This is the Snow Owl Masterclass, which has been requested for a while. If you are new to the channel and unfamiliar with the Masterclass series, it is a series where I go over a tame and discuss all of the advanced and basic mechanics of the tame and how you can use it effectively in PvP. Lastly, if you enjoy my videos and you learned a lot from this video, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends about the channel as it really helps me out. So what is the identity of the Snow Owl? The Snow Owl is probably what is the most reliable and one of the most durable flyers in the game, which also fills a very supportive role, but can also be used solo and complement a player or other teams quite well. The Snow Owl is a perfect example of a jack of all trades, master of none. It has good speed, but is outclassed. It has good survivability, but is also outclassed. And it has good healing, but is outclassed by another dino. So that makes it quite effective on its own due to its ability to fill many roles at once, but it is balanced in that it can't do them better than anything else. It does excel in a few areas, however, and its ability to slow and freeze enemy players and, and dinos makes it one of the best tames in group play. It also makes it a fairly effective solo ganking tame and overall, I would absolutely recommend learning to use the Owl, as it has a place in almost any type of PvP environment. There are some weaknesses of the Owl, along with the fact that it can't deal very much damage. It is also in a kind of a weird spot where a lot of fights are not exactly so obvious as to what you do. Like, like for example, if you're on something like a mana, you... Clearly, see you see something, you walk up, you breath attack, and kill it. It's it's simple, but with a owl, things can get complicated because you have no way of dealing direct damage with to them using the actual owl itself. So you have to use things like bolas. You have to sort of cheese them, which is kind of weird because the owl on its own ha complements the player, but the player has to actually do something to make use of the owl. So you can't just freeze bomb people over and over again like that's not going to do anything you have to actually jump off at an, and i don't know shoot them or do something to actually kill them you have to be very proactive with it though i do feel like these weaknesses are greatly overshadowed by the massive amount of strengths that the owl does possess and that is just the fact that the owl is basically a flying massive cock block to everything else in the game you have the ability to counter pretty much everything and to stop anything from killing you you are probably on what is definitely actually no you're on for sure the safest team in the game it is so hard to die on an owl if you're trying not to if you are like i don't know maybe you're just like a, a crazy pve player who never wants to pvp the owl is perfect because this thing can get you out of any situation you're being weight grappled by like five guys you can literally just freeze out of the air and hit all of them and break out of the grapple. You can break your allies out of grapples, you can break your allies out of shit like bolas, you can break your allies out of, and ally tames out of out of grapples as well, and you can escape from turrets, you can fly over like, you can fly past an entire death wall and not die, you can heal yourself when you're, when you're low on health, you have a ton of stamina to work with, you have a ton of health to work with so that your stamina regen is always going to be high, and all, overall, you have so much to work with that makes the owl a really fantastic tame. So, first things first, we're going to go over the Snow Owl's controls. And they're pretty simple, there's not very many of them. It's a fairly easy tame to learn how to use initially. So, one of the most important things to understand is it's much like the Griffin, you can hold sprint and look down as you fly, and you will do a dive. This dive is comparable in speed to the griffin and it's worth noting that it actually increases in speed with imprint so if you have an imprinted owl it'll fly a bit faster than an unimprinted owl um so to perform a freeze on the ground all you have to do is hold right click and you will freeze anything in front of you this will heal you it'll heal your owl it'll heal anything that's in range of the freeze. So this has a smaller range. Now what happens if you freeze in the air, like hold right click in the air, you will bomb. And this has a much greater AoE. So you can hit, the, like if I, um, if I just go up to this racer right here and I try and freeze him from right here, it's not going to work. But if I freeze bomb him right here, it'll freeze. 
So that's just a little example of that. Now, if like the griffin, if you just go straight down, you do a little explosion. And what this explosion does is it slows the enemy. So if you hit somebody directly with this slow, it's got a quite, quite a big AoE. So if I slam down here, it should hit that. And it hits everything around it, and it gets slowed quite a bit. Now they nerfed this slow. It used to be a lot longer, and it was a bit OP. But now it's fairly balanced. And if you hit someone with this, important to note that they get a damage resistance during the slow so you have to be careful with how you use this because you can't just slam down on somebody and then have somebody you know kill them with a tame because they're gonna have a huge amount of damage resistance during that slow it's part of the balance of the tame and also keep in mind that when you freeze bomb even an enemy you'll still heal them so Keep that in mind when playing with the owl because you can end up healing your enemy. Like if your if your tribe mates are attacking somebody and you know killing, like, I don't know, lit them on fire with a flamethrower, he is going to get healed up all the way when you freeze him. And it'll also the freeze consumes hunger to heal, so it uses up a lot of food. Very important to note that. And one of the other abilities of the owl is to press C you can actually have this sort of heat vision, which is very useful. And using an INI &I will basically rob you of this ability. And I think it's kind of a shame because this ability is quite useful. If you are flying over an obelisk or you're flying over some, I don't know, some area where you think there's a dude on foot, it becomes much, much easier to see them if you're using this. And it, they get brighter the closer you are. And the further away they are, they're more like blue. So like cold, I guess it's, that makes sense, right? That's how it works. Uh, this also uses a tiny bit of extra stamina while you're flying, but for the most part, the owl has very good endurance and pretty much never has to land. Now, I want, I want you to understand that the owl is not like the griffin in that you can swoop and attack, but this does pretty much no extra damage at all. I, no, it doesn't deal any extra damage whatsoever. And the owl is very, very bad at dealing damage. It deals practically nothing. And you're not going to be able to kill anybody with just the owl's damage alone, because it doesn't deal enough damage. The owl produces one of the best forms of fertilizer in the game, which is owl pellets. And these things have a ton of nitrogen, and they're great for your plants. Um, it's not as good as fertilizer, but it's almost as good, and it's so much easier to produce. And what you can actually do is... So how this game works is, as you use stamina, you drain food, which then allows your game to, you know take a shit so if i if i use up a bunch of stamina by freezing and then i unfreeze and start regening stam you'll see if i spam the shit key i'll be able to puke a bunch of times well just once but basically i can you know the more stamina you use up the more you can you can shit but you know for the owl it's actually barfing but either way you know you understand what i mean so those are pretty much the main abilities of the owl it there are a few advanced mechanics associated with these that i'm going to go over now The owl has a lot of advanced mechanics, and I want to go over one of the interesting ones, which is the freeze glitch. So this is sort of like a lesser known bug about the owl, which will cause your freezes to essentially, you'll see, it's hard to explain. So I'm going to go test it over here, right? So if I freeze over the water, normally I'll just get dismounted and fall in the water, and that, that's not good, but... If you freeze dismount midair, your owl will hit the water. You can mount them, and what happens is you will freeze anything you touch. This is kind of stupid, and um, not sure why this this is a thing, but you know it's arc, so you'll see if I uh, touch this thing, boom, instantly frozen. That is the freeze glitch. It's fairly simple. It's very very easy. Just keep in mind though that if you do this glitch you are now unable to land without freezing things. So you basically can't just sit and land for stamina normally because as soon as I touch the ground, it'll freeze. And this also prevents you from doing something else, which I will show in a bit, which is another technique to make your owl go essentially like two times faster than it normally does. Um, 
So this, this technique is quite useful. It's great for getting other flyers out of the air because you can dive at them. And all you have to do is touch them and they'll freeze out of the sky. Instead of you having to try and do shit like, oh, there's the owl. Oh, try and freeze him. Oh, I missed. Now I'm falling all the way down. You don't have to worry about that sort of thing, right? So that that's what this is mostly useful for. And it's quite a good uh, technique. Though use it with caution because it can get you in a pretty bad spot if you're using it wrong. And I just want to explain again how it works. So to actually get this dismount to work, you have to essentially right click and dismount at the exact same time. So you, I'm basically just going to right click and press E at the same time. And my owl is going to freeze to the water. So it's important to learn that timing because this timing is used for a few other glitches and a few other mechanics that the owl has. And it's quite useful. So, you know, if I want to freeze this guy out of the air, boom. Easy. So the next thing I want to talk about is probably the most important mechanic to learn on the owl. And this is essentially the owl dive speed boost. So the owl is pretty buggy, as you can see, and it has a lot of different things you can do to make it go faster. So I'm going to just normally fly around here, like dive, and you can see I'm going fairly fast, but if I do this... I can get a lot of extra speed, get, get catapulted, do it again, hit a wall, fly up, get my full dive speed in like a second. Even if I'm close to the ground, I can still get that full dive speed and get a ton of elevation. Now, this is so useful. You need to learn and master this because this is going to get you out of so many situations. This is like the most important thing in the world to understand how to do on the owl. You can definitely notice the massive speed difference. And this is an unimprinted owl, so it might not look as much of a speed difference. But if you're on a fully imprinted owl, this will gain you so much more speed. And you're basically ex extending the length of your dive. And what this allows you to do, so if, if I'm like only up this high off the ground, if I dive down, I'm not going to get much speed. But if I do this, I can fly up and get that full dive speed even if I'm only a little bit off the ground, which means you can escape some crazy situations where you are like caught close to the ground by, I don't know, like something like a wyvern and you have no speed and you have no elevation. So somewhere where the griffin would be very scared because he has no height, the owl is still okay because you can get that glitch speed and basically accelerate off the ground at a, at a like massive speed boost. It's, it's crazy. And this is very, very useful. So how does this work? It's really simple, but you need to get down the timing because you need to be able to do this reliably like almost every single time. This is because what happens if you mess it up is this and you have no speed and you're starting at like zero acceleration from the ground and it's terrible. So don't ever mess it up. You've got to practice this and how it works is as soon as you dive and you're about to hit the ground, you pull up at the last second and then you can dive and basically lift off the ground. So as you can see, I'll do it. Now I'm just walking, at, and you can see how my screen's kind of zoomed out. If I press spacebar, I'll go flying off at, at a fast speed. You can see that again, look. Screen's more zoomed out than normal. I'll show you what it looks like normally. This is how zoomed in it is normally. And when I hit the ground, my screen will be zoomed out like that. And that's how you know you got the glitch. So this is very, very important. And you gotta... The timing is quite forgiving. You can pull up quite early. You can pull up quite late and you'll still be able to get it. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, it sort of piggybacks off of the last thing I just talked about, which is the speed boost. And this is essentially the extended version of the speed boost. So if I do something like this, I fly off the edge. I don't take fall damage. Then I shoot up in the air. I just got like triple the speed distance or the, uh, the boost distance I got normally. But how does that work? How did I do that? So basically what happens is if you hit a elevation like this and fall off like a cliff you maintain that speed in the air as you fall so i could do it again here then i oh sorry this is this is too high obviously you don't want to do it off of a cliff because you need to touch the ground to get that extra speed and you don't want to take a ton of fall damage another thing i want to talk about is the dismount glitch now people don't really consider this a glitch i do i'm pretty sure that this is a glitch and um, the reason why I think it's a glitch is because it's very inconsistent and this is not something that the owl is supposed to do and it makes no sense. So 
This is most common on large teams, so if you try and freeze a large team, there is a chance that the player will get dismounted. This is heavily based off of the angle that you do it at. Um, it's hard to, for me to demonstrate this in single player since there's not very many big teams to, to show it on, and also I don't have anybody to test it on. So I just want to show an example here. So if we call this the Owl... Sorry, I'm going to increase the font size. Owl Freeze hitbox, all right? This is the Owl Freeze hitbox right here. And then we'll go and make a little square, which is going to be the enemy's tame hitbox, okay? So this is the enemy's tame hitbox, all right? Now this is the enemy player's hitbox i'm gonna do basically like a little i don't know a little rectangle here so this is the enemy player's hitbox all right and this is their tame they're riding their tame this is your alfrey's hitbox and this is the tame that you're hitting so if you were to freeze like this hitting the player and the tame you will not dismount them but if you hit the tame and not the player, you will dismount the player, if that makes any sense. So you want to position your freeze away from them enough so that you can hit either like the corner or the very edge of their hitbox without hitting the player. So this is really easy on stuff like Madden's because they have long ass tails and it's perfect. Uh, great, easy on Gigas, Rexes, Spinos, quite easy to do. Uh, but things like Bloodstalkers and other owls and smaller flyers it's going to be a lot harder to do this on but you can consistently replicate it if you position your hitbox like this and not like this or trying to freeze directly on top of them you won't dismount them I, this is i how i believe the glitch occurs now i'm not entirely positive that this is what causes the glitch but i'm almost fairly certain that this is i'm almost 100 percent positive is what i'm meaning to say i'm almost 100 percent positive that this is what causes it because this just sort of makes sense to me as to why this would cause a glitch. So try to position your freeze like this, rather than like this, or like this. Try to freeze the team and not the player, and that will cause the player to get dismounted. Alright, so another quick thing I want to demonstrate is... It's basically like a... Kind of a useless, more of like a flashy mechanic. That you probably won't get much use out of, but it's still a, it's a thing, I guess. So if you, if you dive bomb straight into the ground... You can hit a slow and then, oh, I messed it up. You can basically slow and freeze at the same time, like that. So if you see, the timing is pretty specific. You have to sort of, yeah, it's, it's very hard. And if you practice this, see, the reason why I haven't practiced this is because it's not very useful, but you can essentially get that slow and freeze at almost the exact same time. Mostly you'll just throw somebody off, sort of confuse them with it. I just wanted to mention that it's a thing, because you can kind of, um, you want to you want to sort of do them at the exact same time, like, very hard. It's not easy to do. I'll tell you guys that. It's not easy to, to get it. There you go. Like that. And to be honest, is it that useful? No, not really. But it does look cool. It definitely looks cool. So that is a thing you can learn how to do if you really want. So another thing I want to bring up is the quick freeze. This is not a glitch, more of just a uh, strategy. So the owl is quite a predictable team because when you see somebody you're going to freeze, you're falling in a path that is very predictable and anybody can see where you're going to land basically. And it's quite obvious. All right. And you're very easy to get Z'd off. However, you can do what is called a quick freeze, which is like this. Where you can only freeze at the last second. And this makes it a lot better because you can control if you want to cancel your freeze or if you want to, you know, if you want to stop freezing. It's perfect because you can, you could be like, oh, I'm going to freeze this guy. Oh, actually, never mind. Never mind. He did something I don't like and I don't want to freeze. Maybe he popped the giga or something. It's like, yeah, I don't want to freeze him anymore. And, or you see, or maybe you come down, you see, you see Y at the last, you see plant Y at the last second, you're like, okay, now I know not to freeze on him. 
But if you do something like this, like, oh, I see a player, let me uh, freeze. You can't pull out. You have no choice but to freeze them. You're falling and you're committed. With this, you get the freeze off, but you're not committed. And you could just fly off right away. It's a very quick motion. All right, so an important thing to note that this doesn't happen on single player, but it happens on multiplayer. I don't know why, but when you freeze and you dismount right away, your owl just like, see a motherfucker. He just flies off. This could be kind of annoying in certain situations. I don't know why this does not happen in multiplayer, but, or why does it not happen in single player, but it happens in multiplayer. It's very weird. He just flies off. Sometimes he won't do it, but usually the owl will just start flying off and it's quite annoying. Actually, it's very, very annoying. And I don't know why the game does this. All right. So I have to actually come onto a single player to, or assault, uh, fucking goddamn multiplayer to test this because it doesn't work on single player. Very weird. I, I don't know why this game is like weird inconsistencies with single player where things don't work, but basically I'm going to show you what you're actually going to do with the owl. So you're going to, you're going to freeze bomb. This is a technique how you can kill people on foot or kill people on certain teams. And what you're going to do is you're going to run and you're going to freeze, dismount, bola, right? That's a pretty common technique. It works well. You have to be very fast now because they, they nerf the speed. So, or they nerf the amount of time you could freeze somebody for. So you don't get as much time as you used to. I also want to make this clear what can happen if you mess up the timing of basically what is your, your freeze bomb bola. You can mess up the timing and unfreeze the person you just bolt. I'll show you this time. As you can see, I bullet him, but he's able to move. So how how does that work? How how is he able to move? I bullet him. Now the owl has a very weird mechanic, which allows it to break people out of bolas, break people out of grapples, break teams out of grapples, break people out of Y, all that sort of stuff. How this game works is essentially if something stuns you, which or prevents you from moving, you can undo that effect by using another thing, which essentially stops movement. So this is why you can whip people out of bolas. This is why you can freeze somebody out of a grapple. And this is why you can Z your own dinosaur out of a bear trap. It's, it's inconsistent and it doesn't work like that all the time, but that is essentially what is happening. So when you freeze the target and bowl of them before they unfreeze, that action of unfreezing is basically untoggling basically toggling the so when you freeze them they're essentially idle like they can't move when you bowl of them you refresh that state to idle again basically so they can't move again but that freeze is still on there and it, th it still thinks that they're frozen so as soon as the freeze goes away that idle state from the bola is no longer there which means they're able to run around while having being bolded so that's how that works I hope you guys can understand what I'm trying to say. It's kind of difficult to explain it, but I think I did a decent enough job to sort of let you guys know what I'm talking about, you know? So I don't, I'm not sure when this happened, but a while ago, Wildcard removed the ability to grapple something and then mount your team. Now, I'm not sure when they did this. I don't re ever remember seeing a patch note on this, but I have, I have a feeling it was unintentional, but it just came as a side effect of something else. Uh, you used to be able to freeze bomb on somebody and then grapple them, which was a fairly useful technique, but now you can't do that and you cannot grapple your own tames or enemy tames or wild tames and then mount your owl and then fly away. I'm not sure why this got removed or when it got removed. I remember doing it not too long ago when I used to grapple the Eurypterids and then drop them on people. I have a video where I did that, uh, so you can see what I'm talking about, but you can no longer do that. So it's a bit unfortunate that they took that out. Now Another, another technique with the owl is its ability to soak. Yes, the owl can be, be used as a soaker, however... It is not a very good soaker. I'm just going to say that right now. It's not a very good soaker. But what makes it so good is the fact that it's tanky enough to take... To be able to soak, like, basically, like, a full turret with its entire health. And then be able to heal itself. So what you want with, from, a, from an owl that's going to be used for soaking, 
you're gonna want like not this much you're gonna want like 40,000 plus health on your owl and you're gonna want a really good you're gonna want a really good saddle that microraptor is trying to stun me you're gonna want a really good saddle on it so you can soak and how this works is you can fly over player only turrets so it depends on obviously where they are so you can't you won't be able to soak in most caves with this but it's great for like things that are outside like outside towers if you're solo and this is the only thing you have you can totally use an owl to soak you can also use it to soak things like rafts because rafts are going to have normal auto turrets and it's perfect for that because it doesn't take very much damage and you can just land on another raft somewhere else and heal yourself go back it's very very safe it's a probably one of the safest ways to raid a raft very very good technique very easy to do not very complicated i totally recommend learning how to do that and consider using the Alice of Soaker one day. You might enjoy it because it's able to fly away on its own and it's quite a formidable tame alone. So if you get caught out, whereas if you get caught out like soaking with a trike, there's really nowhere you can go. You can't run away, but with an owl, you can fly off. You can heal yourself. It's sort of like a all-in-one package, which is why I love the owl so much. Now, of course, in, in terms of techniques, there are a ton of different things you can do with any tame. Different strategies, I could talk about synergies with the Microraptor, and so I talk about other synergies with other teams, but there's just so much to go over that I think that it would just waste a lot of your guys' time in this video, and I don't think I really need to mention most of it. Um, however, I will talk about one of the Owl's other uses, which is very good, and it is uh, its uses in Gigafights. Now, the Owl is fantastic at winning Gigafights. How, how this works, a Gigafight is basically like, think of it a babysitting. Right? The, the Gigas, Gigas and the Riders are like little babies, and everybody else... Oh, whoops. Everybody else is a... Uh, I'm fucking stupid. Alright, everybody else is basically a babysitter, alright? So you have, um... You have all these babysitters and these little baby Gigas who need all of your help to fight the other Gigas because they can't do it by themselves. So what happens is, your job as the Owl Rider is to freeze the Gigas so that they're standing still, and the other Gigas could get the first bite guaranteed. Uh, it becomes a little bit more obs obscured when there's other enemy owls trying to do the same thing to your Gigas, in which case you have to prevent them from killing your Gigas by freezing their Gigas so that your babies don't die. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying here is basically that Giga fights are never really won by Gigas, they're usually won by Owls or other teams that can enable the Gigas to actually get a kill. So another technique on the Owl is to actually freeze the enemy's dino. And this is, you're not trying to dismount them, so you're doing just a normal freeze onto their team, and you're gonna at the last second, you're gonna dismount and throw a Z into the dino's face. This would stun them, and then you can either, you know, foot PvP them or do whatever you want. Just basically, you're trying to stun their team. That is another technique that gets used. I don't have any Z on me right now, so I can't really demonstrate it, but it's fairly straightforward. You dive on them. Like, I'll, 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 I'll show an example, I guess. You'll dive on them like this. You're going to freeze. You dismount, and then, you know, you chuck a Z right here. You chuck a Z. You're probably going to Z your own owl in the process, but that's just how it is. So one of the counters to the Owl, like pretty much every flyer in the game, is the Tropio Ignathus. And the reason why this is a counter at all is simply because of the fact that the Owl can do literally nothing to the Tropio, and the Tropio can theoretically kill an Owl outright. Uh, the grenades of the Tropio don't really do much damage to saddle teams, however, if left in, if, if just in an open airspace, the Tropio can keep up with the owl infinitely and pretty much use no stamina by drafting and can basically stay behind it forever and essentially just kill it after you know it will take a lot of grenades but on paper the tropia is uh, a counter to the owl it's just not really a crazy counter it can also pick you off of the owl really easily so you have to be careful for that um it's not a super big threat you don't have to be as afraid of it as other dinos have to be afraid of the tropio but the Tropio is the king of the skies, and, you know, you do have to respect a Tropio and his, uh, his grenades, because these things do a ton of damage if you have a good saddle, and a Tropio can pretty much stay behind an owl 
forever and keep launching grenades at it. So just keep that in mind. And, you know, he can always come in and pick you. But the pick is very hard to land, but, you know, a good Tropio Rider will be able to pick you off quite easily. I will also say that Pteranodons are a fair, I guess, annoyance to an owl, and that's simply because of the fact that the owl can't do anything to actually kill a Pteranodon, and a good Pteranodon, like an actual well-bred Pteranodon, can stay in the air for a very, very long time. It has enough health to survive anything that an owl can do to them. They're super mobile, so you can turn super quickly on a dime, and you can easily pick an owl rider if he's following you or if he's, um, you know, you can basically, like, as an owl goes into freeze, you can come back on a PT and pick him off very, very easily. And this can goes for any picker, but it's most common for the PT because the PT can pick up the guy much quicker with a bigger hitbox and basically just fly off with him. Uh, so the PT is kind of a counter. It's not something you should be afraid of. The owl doesn't really have anything where it's like, Oh my god, I just, this, I have to run. This, this guy's gonna kill me. It's, the owl doesn't have any counters like that, but it does have things that it doesn't do very well against, and the PT is kind of one of them, and it might sound a little weird, and it's also part of the reason because he's so small and hard to hit with a freeze in the air, that an airborne PT is very, very difficult to deal with on an owl, and he can really stop you from doing your job, especially in gigafights, so you have to watch out for those nasty PTs. The final counter to the owl, it is something that is quite easily avoidable, but is pretty much going to prevent you from doing anything, and that is plant Y. Uh, also, I guess you could say anything that sort of works as a ground trap, so bear traps, uh, perlovias, anything like that is also pretty much grouped in with this. They all prevent you from doing your job as a snow owl. Uh, as a snow owl, you do have to touch, you know, whether you like it or not, you do pretty much have to touch the ground in order to get a good freeze off. And if there is Y all over the ground, you are going to get, you're going to freeze straight into Y and you're going to get stuck and dismounted and that is not good. Um, what you do not want is to, you know, be in the middle of a giga fight and you fly down and you freeze the, you know, you try to freeze the gigas and you hit Y and as soon as you get dismounted, you know, those gigas are biting non-stop. Your owl has enough health to survive a few bites, but you, on the other hand, are going to die instantly. So as soon as you touch that Y, you're dead instantly. So Y is a very scary thing for an owl and somebody, even in like non- group pvp just one dude standing in y uh there isn't really anything you can do about it because he can just sit there in the y and you can't do anything you don't have any ranged abilities you don't have any form of damage you don't have the owl becomes in completely useless when there's plant y on the ground but that is a lot of tames it, like a lot of tames aren't able to do stuff when there's y on the floor like bloodstalkers can have trouble manas can have a lot of trouble as well uh but the owl is genuinely useless when there's Y, and that's because he actually cannot get close enough to get his freeze off. Uh, the, the way you could still get a freeze off would be to try and target the player's tame, so try and land on top of the tame instead of actually landing on the ground. Uh, it could be risky, and the freeze is probably not going to be as good as it would be otherwise, but it's your best bet, and that's probably the best way to get around it. Otherwise, Y kind of sucks, and that's just how it is. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this masterclass. Um, it, it's pretty long, but I felt like it was pretty informative, and I think I did a pretty decent job of explaining a lot of the mechanics in the, of the owls. And if you uh, learned something from this video, remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends about the channel. Uh, you can also come and join the Discord, where you can ask me anything, and I will probably respond. And I have all sorts of resources there, like INIs, and other things that you can use. And the community is great. They were, the, the community is very helpful on their own. I, I, I barely have to do anything. Uh, it's a lot. It's a good lot of people. And honestly, if you are looking to get better at the game, this uh, Arcademy Discord is fantastic. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.